State of the infrastructure. Here you see a picture that you may have seen before uh, of uh, uh, the spread of countries across Europe and beyond uh, that have an official relationship with Clarin. So it's the 24 member countries, uh, but there's also um, uh, some places where there are center, Clarin centers, not in Clarin countries. Um, there's lots of um, data centers, B centers as we call them, Dita will tell you all about it. Uh, and I suppose you know we also have K centers, knowledge centers. Um, as they are, they are growing in number, we also uh, attribute gradually more and more meaning to them. So we uh, uh, have a policy towards uh, increased coverage of the topics uh, that uh, are in place for those K centers. So they can be focusing, focusing on specific uh, expertise on certain languages. They can also be um, uh, uh, focusing on uh, a topic like vocabularies or tree banks or um, uh, certain tools for certain uh, disciplinary domains. Um, we uh, uh, have made sure that their visibility is increased by including them in another initiative that we are running now for several years, namely Tour de Clarin. Uh, quite soon, by the end of this year, a new edition of Tour de Clarin will be released. You will be informed about it via the news channels. Um, and another important structural element of the infrastructure is, of course, the role of the website, which is supposed to be uh, a channel for multiple audiences, which make it, doesn't make it always easy for everybody to find its way. Um, Quite recently, with the uh, uh, outbreak of the pandemic, we were uh, invited by several um, stakeholders and, and, and policy bodies to clarify clearly um, what we thought that our field could, could contribute to the um, handling of the crisis. And we created a separate page for that, uh, where all kinds of initiatives are listed, uh, li uh, also initiatives by others. Have a look if you haven't seen it before. Um, a very important element in, um, uh, in the agenda for Clarin in, since last year is the reinforced collaboration uh, with other research infrastructures in the domain of social sciences and humanities. We're all in this S3 framework that you may or may know not uh, or may, may not know about. Uh, but there is a project uh, that allows us to that, get, that get has uh, provides a budget for the collaboration between research infrastructures such as Daria and Sesta, Share, uh, ESS, uh, Aries, and a few more bodies like Liber. Um, and uh, together we um, build we we are building a stronger service offer for users of. Um, cultural data, language data, and survey data. Most of the social sciences uh, focus on survey data, which in combination brings uh, a number of very interesting strategic themes for Clarin uh, itself and also for the collaboration. Um, some of them are listed here. Um, of course, the Federation of Resources, uh, uh, but more content-wise, uh, the development of methodological frameworks for heterogeneous data, for uh, mixed methods, for uh, the use of uh, and support for the use of uh, multimedia collections such as uh, interview data. Um, existing tools such as the um, language uh, switchboard um, are being prepared for integration in the cloud or further integration in the cloud. There are some work on FAIR models for sensitive data, especially uh, spoken data. Uh, there's work on dedicated translation services, for example, for survey data. And very important element that we can develop uh, in the context of this collaborative project is the uh, uh, development of models for training uh, and education and, and resources for training and education for researchers from our own domain, but also for, from, uh, for people from the GLAM sector, the galleries, libraries, archives and museum sector. And a specific uh, topic that Clarin has taken on board in the context of shock is uh, the harmonization of 
vocabularies and our vocabulary platforms. Claire and Eric is participating as the lead beneficiary uh, for our community, but there are also six more uh, institutes uh, from the Claren community that participate with the budget in this project. I would also like to point uh, you to uh, the continuing uh, activities to, uh, towards uh, the Claren resource families. It's really one of our strategic flagships. It allows us to collaborate uh, or to, to stimulate national consortia to collaborate um, uh, on uh, very specific domain specific or topically specific data sets. The collaboration allows for improvement of the metadata quality and therefore uh, contributes a lot to the better visibility of those resources. And of course, it also allows to um, work on the alignment of our infrastructural initiatives with disciplinary and multidisciplinary agendas. Um, so it, it, it contributes to more comparative research uh, across languages and regions. And in this context, I would like to point your attention to some recently launched initiatives. Um, one is the uh, coordination project for improved Clarin research family metadata, metadata curation. Uh, there is a call for interest uh, in small projects. Um, you can find the call text on the funding page or on the longer link that you see in the slides. Uh, and another project that is uh, uh, addresses a sub team of the resource families agenda is the uh, parliament project which aims to build uh, a, a better set of uh, or an extended set of uh, parliamentary corpora especially focusing on um, uh, debates in the pub in in uh, public debates on a uh, crisis such as covid-19 this project and also the uh, coordination project uh, I just mentioned could be funded because um, as a whole, uh, Clarin is, Clarin Eric is uh, not spending all the budget, uh, all of the budget that we allocated for, for this year and, and for next year we anticipate something similar because of the fact that we don't travel, um, we can spend our money uh, in a few other ways. So these are very, strategically important um, uh, initiatives that we're glad to be able to fund. Um, so this is another advantage of uh, an advantage of the of the pandemic, if, if you can see it this way. Um, something more about the uh, ambassador program that you may have heard about. Uh, we were really uh, glad to, to see that uh, uh, getting started because it helps us to reach out to communities that we would otherwise not be able uh, to reach. Of course, the lack of travel uh, created some dilemmas, but uh, um, the, the Claring Cafe program is one of those alternative ways of uh, uh, making sure that the potential of this program uh, can continue to take place. Um, it's good to mention that we organize all kinds of events, uh, sometimes with funding from projects such as Shock, uh, but they all um, are aimed at an uptake in, in a wider range of communities in, uh, uh, for, for our services and, and, and tools. There are a few examples on the slides. And um, we have created gradually uh, a longer list of opportunities for funding uh, with budgets from uh, Clarin Central, so Clarin Eric. Some of them are listed here. They contribute to this general uh, strategic priority of uh, paying more attention to education and training, reaching out to more diverse communities, etc. Um, I would invite you to check out the options on the funding page that we have. This is where we are right now, but of course we also have some uh, plans for the future. Uh, for a more wider spectrum of uh, activities even, uh, starting with uh, some reinforced investments, uh, but definitely the ambassador 
uh, program and existing investment um, is supposed to grow because we do see potential for this program by having more ambassadors reaching out to more com communities. We also want to have more frequent interaction with members of our uh, SSH expert panel. You uh, were able to uh, see uh, two of them uh, in action yesterday. Um, but these are, these are important consultants for uh, the development of our agenda. As I said before, uh, Claren Office is planning to organize the capacity with expertise uh, on the organization of virtual events in a structural manner. And um, given the diversity of activities that, that we have developed thus far, uh, it has become very clear that our website needs to um, undergo some redesign to be able to better reach the various audiences and also to uh, be able to navigate more easily. Uh, the look and feel could be a bit more contemporary. Uh, we will add a new section on uh, uh, what we, that we call impact stories, stories of individual developers, uh, teams, uh, users that explain how the contribution of Clarin helps them to do their work. And I would like to share with you a sneak preview of that new website in a minute. We will definitely uh, organize some um, uh, feedback loop. So once there is a beta version, you will be able to comment and uh, suggest uh, further ideas for improving the website. Um, we are uh, currently working on a new strategy for the coming period. The, the theme of that strategy will be language as, as social and cultural data. You see here some uh, of the text that play a role in uh, the positioning of clearing in that new strategy, uh, especially uh, the uh, integration of or the, the, um, the positioning of clearing in, in the developments related to all kinds of uh, uh, datification uh, uh, phenomena in society and the role of, of data in digital humanities will play a role in, in the positioning. Um, and, and again, the alignment with uh, new methodological frameworks and technical innovation, and of course also the dynamics in the landscape of the European Open Science Cloud will play a role. Finally, I would like to uh, bring to your attention the fact that as of uh, January 2021, Daya Fischer will um, step back as director, vice executive director of Claren Eric. Uh, and will be uh, succeeded by Francesca Fontini. This is something that was announced a few weeks ago, but uh, not yet uh, maybe uh, arrived as a, uh, a new perspective for Claren uh, in the wider community. So hopefully we will be able to meet next year in Madrid as originally see, foreseen for this year, but definitely we, we are looking forward to uh, celebrating the 10th anniversary of Claren Eric in uh, early 2022.